Okay, friends. Now we are going to talk about uh, the type of bacteria which are called spirochetes. And among spirochetes, we are going to talk about the three types of bacteria as we are seeing here. Is one is a Tryponema, another one is a Borrelia, another another type is Leptosporia. Uh, and uh, and among all these different types of bacteria, we are going to talk. Uh, they are having some general characteristics in common. Uh, and they are also having something in their different, uh, uh, which are differing from uh, each other. Now we are going to talk about major and basically among their physical properties as well as some biochemical features uh, inside their cells. And we are going to talk about the pathogenesis uh, that they cause or the diseases that they cause uh, for humans. Okay. Now the object. Now now let us talk. Uh, no, let us this th in this uh, total uh, discussion of mine. We are uh, first thing I am going to talk about the main characteristics of spirochetes. Among where we are, we are going to see the different types of spirochetes and what are their general features of their cell. And the second thing we are going to talk about the human pathogenic spirochetes. Among them we are talking about the morphology, classification, and uh, physiology. We are not going to talk about uh, diagnosis and treatment. We are just go uh, going go up to the epidemiology and uh, and till. There. Okay. Now the main goal of our discussion is to learn about the spirochetes. Okay. Not learn about the diseases. Now there are three types of uh, spirochetes as we know. Uh, as we are going to talk, one is the uh, Tryponemas, another one is the Borrelia species. Tryponemas or uh, uh, Tryponemes cause uh, disease uh, which is called uh, the gonorrhea, as we know. Uh, no, Tryponema causes the disease as we know, uh, syphilis. And Borrelia species causes the disease relapsing fever and also Lyme disease. And Leptospira uh, causes uh, different uh, types, sets of disease we are going to see later. Now, the let's first talk about the general feature of a spirochete. Now, as we can see in this picture, the spirochetes are really, really thin. They are helical uh, in nature. So, this is the characteristic shape of a spirochete. So whenever we are talking about a bacteria, as we know, first thing ca that comes to our mind when you look a uh, bacteria in, uh, through the objective lens, through the eyepiece of a microscope, we find something like that, sometimes uh, like this, this round shape. But in this case, the first thing you can see when you look uh, through the microscope, we see a spiral structure like that. And this coil structure is a very, very uh, important characteristic shape of the spirochetes. So whenever we are looking at this kind of structure, and also this bacteria is motile, they can uh, be transferred from one place to another place uh, by using the screw-like uh, motion, we can say the bacteria we are watching is a type of spirochetes. And these bacteria are gram-negative, that means they are having three layers. We are having the inner cell membrane layer, then we have the peptidoglycan layer. Suppose this rigid, this layer is a peptidoglycan. Then uh, upper up a layer of the peptidoglycan there is a layer outside the peptidoglycan which is the external cell layer though the peptidoglycan layer is really really thin in this case but still a uh, peptidoglycan layer can be found in those cases and they are having uh, the flagella for their mortality purposes but the important thing about them the flagella spirochetes provide is having the differential structure different type of structure than the flagella what we can see in normal bacteria now as we know the normal bacteria produce uh, flagella from the inner cell layer and it just uh, go through the uh, uh, process through the inner cell membrane then passes through the peptidoglycan layer and then uh, find the outer membrane uh, and uh, just released outside so if we think about uh, so let me er erase all these inks okay and suppose this is a bacteria so this is uh, uh, one of our bacteria and this bacteria possesses a flagella the flagella will look like this so, so the, if this is a bacterial cell and the flagella come out uh, out from the bacterial cell uh, it will uh, be outside the, uh, it will fa it is going to face the environment like that but if we think about the spirochetes what will happen uh, if you look at the spirochete structure uh, look at this so this is the spirochete structure it's a co co coiling structure like that and uh, let me change the color so suppose this is the coiling structure and what happens in case of spirochete this is the cell of spirochete and so so from this cell of spirochete if i if i cross uh, if i say cross make a cross section of the spirochete what we can see we can see some region uh, where also this this uh, flagella is coming out that means so suppose this is a straight chain this is this is uh, the spirochete i am not co uh, coiling this up now now what happens they produces flagella from their inner cell membrane so suppose uh, this is the inner cell membrane so i 
I'm, this, this is the inner cell membrane and this is the outer membrane so I am making it really big for your uh, understanding purposes but not uh, this is not the case so here is also we have we are having so this this is the cytoplasmic portion of uh, this spirochete and this uh, this these are the outer membrane and these are the inner membrane of spirochetes so this this huge region which, which I draw in this picture so actually they are not huge but I draw them because of the understanding purposes now these huge gaps are the periplasmic space as we can know now the flagella of the spirochetes usually generates from a region like that so let me change the color again let me take the red color now here we have uh, the flagella coming out from the inner cell membrane and it is just released into the periplasmic space this is uh, fair periplasmic space instead of go outside the cell so as we can see in case of uh, traditional bacteria that the flagella is generating from inside the cell and it faces the outside the environment but in case of the spirochetes uh, the origin of the flagella remains the same but but its ending point is different it just reside in the periplasmic space so this uh, spirochetes are having a huge periplasmic space in that periplasmic space they are holding their flagella and that's why as we can see in this case so if we think this is the flagella will go uh, in this direction like that so when the flagella start to move and and, and they, they just uh, wrap uh, wrap around themselves uh, around the flagella that they can move in a screw like movement as we can as we know that if we take a screw and if we uh, tight uh, them if we make tighter uh, and and it will finally go in into some direction that's how this kind of spirochetes start to move because they just make them just like a screw and they can move from one place to another place okay now we are going to talk about three types of pathogenic uh, spirochetes one is treponema another one is borrelia and leptos leptospira now in among all these three types of spirochetes what we see in common is this uh, this kind of twisting uh, structure of their cell this kind of spiral structure of their cell as well as the presence of this periplasmic flagella which is called the axial uh, flagella okay okay now this is uh, we can see in common but what will vary from treponema to borrelia and leptospira, leptospira is uh, that uh, uh, the presence of flagella and the number of flagella that they possess so maybe in case of treponema it is only uh, three to four flagella in case of leptospira it is only two uh, or in case of borrelia it is more than five flagella uh, we can find okay but the presence of flagella and the arrangement of their cell along with flagella remains the same in all this on this case